In esports, players are always trying to find new and inventive ways of gaining an upper hand over the competition. Whether it's blue light blocking glasses, more precise keyboard switches, or the newest Herman Miller gaming chair, players will go to great lengths to ensure that they're performing at their best. However, there are some who are willing to take it a step further and push their advantages into an ethical gray area. In the Call of Duty League, this problem has reached the highest levels of competition. Recently, CDL champion Kyler Hook Garland admitted to using Adderall as a performance enhancing drug on the road to winning the CDL crown. So what exactly happened, and more importantly, how will it affect the Call of Duty scene going forward? On June 9th, 2021, Hook released a video on his personal YouTube channel titled My Story. In the video, he revealed that during the 2020 season, when he played for the Dallas Empire, he and his teammates were regularly using Adderall. Hook claimed that he was pressured to do so by his teammates, who were also taking the substance to help them succeed during professional matches. For those unfamiliar, Adderall is a drug, a stimulant, often used by those with ADHD to help them focus on daily tasks. Having the same effect on those without ADHD, it's been called a study drug by college students using it to cram for finals or write papers in a single night. In the gaming community, it fulfills a similar purpose, as players take the drug to improve their focus and perform better during matches. While this has been one of the more public cases of a player admitting to Adderall use, it's not a new issue within the esports scene. The last big discussion about Adderall took place when an article from the Washington Post was published on the rampant use of the drug in high-level competition, with players like Adam Killa Sloss, a former Call of Duty World Champion, claiming that the use of Adderall is an open secret and everyone in the scene is using it. While Adderall use has been a big issue, in the case of Hook, he decided to quit using the drug at the end of the 2020 season. Basically, I won champs and I didn't really feel good on the inside. Of course, I was very grateful for winning. Um, it showed that we worked hard and, you know, we got the win. I felt good about that. But, you know, those couple days afterwards, I didn't feel good. And it was mainly because of one thing. I, at the time, was taking Adderall. To replace the use of Adderall, Hook looked towards other, healthier solutions to help him stay focused during practice and during matches. This included cold showers, meditation, and a healthier diet. You know, normal things. Unfortunately, his decision to sober up caused some friction with his teammates. Noticing a change in his behavior, some of his teammates called him out, asking Hook why he was acting so differently. You know, I started getting called out on a lot of things. You know, like one of the things was, you know, I was too positive and um, I understood that and I took that. I was like, okay, maybe I am being too positive. Maybe I am doing this. Maybe I am doing this wrong. Maybe I am doing this wrong. And I started to believe a lot of the things I was getting told by my teammates and just the environment, like, and it really got to my head. While Hook did his best to remain on the team, even switching up his play style, it was too little too late, and he would be benched and later traded to the LA Thieves. Despite the move to a new team and the positive changes in his life, rumors that Hook was still on drugs and the nickname Crazy Kyler followed him everywhere. These rumors caused further harm to Hook's career as his new teammates and the staff of the Thieves bought into the rumors, leading to Hook being benched. Luckily, since the release of his video, he was reinstated on the main roster. With the allegations of Adderall use by the Dallas Empire, team owner Mike Hastro Rufail published a response video shortly after Hook shared his experiences. Hastro claimed that Hook's benching was purely based on gameplay and had nothing to do with his decision to stop using Adderall. On top of this, Hastro expressed his support towards Hook for coming forward about his Adderall use and hopes that his video will inspire others to follow in his footsteps. Finally, while Hastro didn't make a comment on whether the rest of the Dallas Empire roster was using Adderall, he did refute the claim that Hook was pressured into using the drug. Never in our history have we ever influenced a player to make unhealthy decisions. Um, it's op actually the opposite. We're, we're always pushing our players to uh, make the healthiest decisions possible and allow them to be better competitors. Similar to Hastro's response, the general response from the community has been supportive of Hook. However, the use of Adderall is one topic that the Call of Duty League clearly wants to move on from, despite the need for a long discussion on the drug's use. This became evident during an episode of The Flank Podcast, in which the hosts Tommy Zuma Paparato and Ben J. Nassim were warned to avoid the topic of Adderall during the show.
While they tried to avoid and sidestep the issue, Zuma eventually had enough. He was taking dumb routes or whatever, whatever yeah. was said. Can we like, talk about this video, man? We're going in fucking circles, bro. Let's talk about this fucking video. Let's talk about this hook video, because I'm really pissed off right now, bro. And I don't know about you guys, but, you know, a lot of people can talk about it. Listen, Isn't that we're talking about? From their discussion, one thing has become clear. The CDL has purposely decided to turn a blind eye to the issue. From ESL banning stimulants like Adderall and conducting drug tests for all CSGO tournaments, almost everyone but Activision is putting in some effort towards dealing with the problem. With all that in consideration, the league's decision to simply ignore the problem, even with players and fans calling for action, is an abdication of responsibility to say the least. Unfortunately, Adderall use is difficult to regulate. In some leagues, Adderall is allowed if the player has a prescription, but this can easily be circumvented with some falsified paperwork. As well, many argue that there is little evidence suggesting that Adderall actually improves a player's ability to perform in a game. This is something that has been brought up by former commissioner of the Overwatch League, Nate Nanzer, when asked about drug testing in 2018. He said, quote, Adderall is a legal prescription in the United States of America, and there's no data that suggests that it makes you better at playing Overwatch. Ultimately, the issue of Adderall use is one that will be hard to fix, especially with some leaders in the industry, like the Call of Duty League, being reluctant to even talk about it. Unless a league is willing to buckle down and confront the issue, the allure of a study drug that will make you better at video games is going to be too much for most competitors, and the prevalence of Adderall in professional gaming will continue to be a problem until publishers like Activision do the right thing and actually deal with it. This video is made possible thanks to our wonderful patrons. Massive thank you to everyone on this list, and shout out to Jason, B, Brendan, Foxy, Iron, Lyra, Mauve, Nate, Nathan, Oshayo, Sierra, Shampoo, Weeaboo, Spartacus, and Yashichi for being Platinum supporters. And an extra special shout out to Steven, Noodles, Marco, and Mookie for being Diamond supporters. We hope you guys love this video. If you also want to support our channel and unlock perks, check out the Patreon link in the description below or join our Discord server. If you want to help us out in a different way, leaving a like, subscribing, and hitting the bell to stay up to date is also appreciated. My name's Jonah, thanks for watching.